Uh, my favorite food is chicken because there are many ways to prepare and it's delicious. When I grow up, I would like to become a farmer because I would like to ensure there is food security. If I could grow a magical plant, I would grow a plant which helps to solve issues within the community. When I grow up, I would like to be a, a farmer because I like to make foods and I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't have to go to the, the supermarket to get food all the time. If I were to grow a magical tree, I would want to have schools so I can provide education for everybody around the world. When I grow up, I would like to be a farmer because it earns me income and I can help the society by providing food. My magical tree is a tree that will end corruption. Concentration is the game, keep the rhythm if you can. Concentration is the game, keep the rhythm if you can. Sifa, sifa. Ay, vaka, vaka, sifa, sifa. Come to Kitengela International School. This is Kitengela Shambani. We're learning about sugarcane farming today. This is uh, expert Simon from Kitengeli International School, Junior Secondary School. And uh, as you can see, I am in my own farm, that is the part of the Kisk. And uh, as you can see, just uh, behind me here, we are going to, I'm going to guide you and also direct you on how we can uh, grow sugarcane in any part of this country. And uh, as I begin, I would like just to give my learners some few chances to ask me questions if maybe they want to know more about sugarcane growing. Thank you and welcome. Expert Simon, I have a question. Yes, please. Well, what is the size of your sugarcane farm? Okay, as you can see, she has just asked me the size of my sugarcane farm and uh, it's just a small piece of land, almost around quarter an acre and it is enough for any operation that I need and can satisfy me and my needs. Thank you, Expert Simon. I have another question. Okay. How long have you been growing sugarcane? Uh, don't just uh, see me as if I'm just young. I've done this job for almost around 15 years. Mm. So I'm familiar with the all, everything that happens about sugarcane farming and the like. Thank you, Expert Simon. One last question. Uh, what, what varieties of sugarcane do you uh, cultivate? Okay, when talking about the varieties of sugarcane that I normally cultivate in my farm, they are very many, of course, as I can say, but uh, I prefer to go for 0241, which is a very good type of, uh, of sugarcane. As you can see, it has grown well, it has adapted very well in my, in my farm. My name is Brian Moore. Thank and you, I'm Brian. From, welcome. I'm from Kitengele International School. Okay. So I was just asking, what is your preferred method in sugarcane farming? Okay, when I talk about the method that I prefer most to grow my sugarcane, for example, as you can see from the other side here, I prefer to go for basin method. I also go for trench, but I like trench more because it can hold enough water for my sugarcane as it grows. Okay, so um, which, which, which is the best method that you prefer of irrigation? Okay, the best method that I prefer for irrigation in my farm, uh, I prefer to go for drip irrigation whereby just Look us around and everywhere else here you find that I have very many drips. So these drips apply enough water for my sugar care. But in case I have some challenges, I can also go for other methods. Like I can even use uh, cans to water my sugar care. Yes. One last question, which um, how do you control pests and diseases in your sugar cane field? Okay, when talking about pests and diseases, for example, I have sugar cane whip, which normally attack my sugar cane here, you find that my sugar cane is turning whitish, it is having some, some white white spots and the like, so what do I do? I prefer to go for, I can spray, even though when talking about spray here, I use chemicals to control the pesticides and uh, they are all done. Thank you. Welcome.
Hi, expert Simon. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Yes. I have a question. Okay, what ask. fertilizers do you use for sugarcane cultivation? When I talk about uh, how I normally make sure that my sugarcane is strong and growing, I even don't prefer to go for fertilizer. What do I do? I go for compost manure. Why do I go, go for compost manure? Compost manure is friendly. It cannot even cause any harm to my, to my crops and even the consumers. For example, when you visit my farm, what am I going to do? Uh, maybe uh, I will have a thought of uh, giving you a piece of that you can eat as you go. So it will be very safe. Compost manure is the best for me. And uh, in addition, I can also use potassium. I can use uh, potassium, which is also very much okay. That's all. And everything is very okay for that. I have another question. Okay. How do you determine the optimal time for harvesting sugarcane? I will talk about the optimal time for harvesting my sugarcane. For example, look at my pieces which are just behind me here. Uh, number one, we have two factors that you have to consider. Look at the leaves. When you find, when your sugarcane is having very broad and green leaves, know that it is still young. So you look for that sugarcane, whose leaf has tried to shrink as well as turning yellowish and also starting to dry. For example, this one is very ready for that. That's how. Yes. And number two, you can even tap the stem. When you tap the stem and it produces a very soft sound, then it is also ready to be harvested. Okay, one last question. Okay. What challenges do you face in sugarcane cultivation? Uh, when talking about the challenges, number one, water. Scarcity of water can become challenge number one. When talking about scarcity of water, sometimes you find that this area, the water is not enough. So what do I do? I irrigate my farm. Challenge number one, scarcity of water. Number two, we have pests which attack my sugar cane and make it more expensive for me to grow the sugar cane. Thank you, expert Simon. Welcome. My name is Lee Gitao. I'd like to ask you a few questions about sugar cane farming. Welcome, Lee. Are you involved in any sugarcane farmers, associations or cooperatives? Uh, for now, as you can see the size of my farm, uh, this one is just a small scale production which just goes to the people just around me. So I'm thinking of when I increase the size of my farm, I will join some associations. Okay. What is the average yield of sugarcane per acre in your farm? Okay, when you look at uh, this uh, quarter hectare of mine here, when talk about the average size of um, the amount that I can harvest, I can have 100 to 120 tons. Okay, but fine. when you look at my farm now, Sometimes it can even go low to 60 to 80 tons. Okay, final question. Okay. Do you use any sustainable organic farming methods in your sugarcane cultivation? When you talk about uh, the, 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 the kind of growth, the, the kind of cultivation that I normally do in my farm here, I prefer to go for organic one. Why? I don't prefer to go for fertilizer from the market. I use the compost manure and as well, I make sure that my farming remains to be organic but not another type of uh, growth that I can do or another farmer can do because remember safety of the of the farmer and the safety of the consumers is very important so I go for organic hi hi how do you manage weeds on your farm okay the uh, the ways that I can use to manage my or the ones that I practice and use in my farm number one I can talk about uprooting number two I do digging as you can see then when talking about, uh, look at my sugar cane just behind me here. When the sugar cane grows and forms a canopy, it prevents the growth of weeds. So that one also comes naturally in a good way. So I can do hand picking as well as digging. Have you faced any issues with soil fertility in your farm? Mm, of course, yes. Uh, especially when I do not get enough compost manure. Remember, the reason why I prefer to go for compost manure is that compost manure stays for a long time in the soil and uh, the nutrients are not easily lost. So what do I do? I prefer to go for organic manure. And uh, that one makes me not to face the challenges, but sometimes I face a challenge. Remember, it is costly and I have to buy from outside. So when the supply goes low, I face the challenge as well. What post-harvesting practices do you follow for sugarcane production? For now, let me say that uh, I have not gone for the post-processing for my sugarcane because the land is small, the production is low, so what do I do? But at the time, the land, I increase the land because when you look at the other side there, I'm trying to expand. The time I'll expand my farm, I'll also go for those post-process uh, for the, my sugarcane. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Hi. Hi. My name is Angela from Kitengela International School. 
Welcome. Um, I have uh, two questions for you. Okay. Um, are you involved in the production of value-added goods like jaggery and molasses? Ah, uh, when talk about uh, the value-added uh, products, for example, the molasses, uh, you just realize that I don't know. You'll just forgive me for that because my size is too small, so I cannot produce uh, a lot of those value-added, like molasses, to supply to the community. But continue praying, and I know. When the, my land increases, I'll even supply to all the whole of the world. For example, Trukana and some other areas. Yeah, yeah. How do you market your sugarcane goods? Okay, now, the methods that I use to market my sugarcane here, for example, remember, uh, in this area, look at this area of mine here, we do not have many, uh, very many farmers. When you go to Mumias, when you go to Bugoma, those are the main producers in Kenya. But now, when you look at my area here, too small. So, the customers around me, they are aware that I am the only person who produces this kind of value good. So, I do not have any competition. They come by themselves. And again, when you buy them and you take them outside there, they are very sweet, they are quality. So, you don't need even to go outside there and uh, to radio station. But, for a good example, today I've decided to welcome the KTN, uh, the, the presenters, so that they can also help me to make it open for everyone in this world. Hello, experts. Sam. Hello, how are you? I'm Jelani Reddy from Kitchengela International. Oh, I would come. like to ask you a question. Okay, okay. Have, have you adopted any technological innovations in your sugarcane farming? Uh, I can say that uh, I haven't gone for the extreme technology because of the size of my land, but for the size of my land, I have already adopted just few. For example, we have you can see, I'm not using the normal jerrycans to water. I have drips already, which are just helping me to do the irrigation in my farm, all right? So as my land increases, I will also make sure that I go for the higher technology. For example, we have the tractors. I haven't even gotten a chance to use one in my farm, okay? Thank you very much for answering my question. Yes. Hello, expert Simon. Hello. My name is Sifa from Kitengela International School and I have a few questions to ask you. Welcome, Sifa. My first question is, um, what are your plans or goals in involving your sugarcane cultivation? Uh, when you look at my goals, as I was at the beginning, what I say, I say that when you look at the reason why I decided to establish this small farm of mine, number one, I needed to have my, in short, I talk about food security in Kenya. I realize that most just Kenyans around me or even friends around me do not even have some source of nutrients. So I decided to go for sugar cane so that I can supply and also have enough nutrients to the surrounding community as well as to earn me income. When I sell these few pieces, I get money. When I get money, I, which helps me to go for pesticide, which helps me to supply manure in my farm, which helps me to get water when we have scarcity of water and the like. Thank you. My second question is, how has climate change impacted your sugarcane operation? Ah, when you look at my cross behind me, it is just a good luck that God has mercy on me, that uh, it rained yesterday. But just think of when it is dry, we have no water around me. What do you think I normally feel? When I'm crying, my sugarcane also cries. So you see, so we are just there like we need water, we need everything, we need manure, we need everything else. So it just affects me as a farmer. Thank you, expert Simon. Welcome. Uh, so thank you kids for visiting my farm and uh, for the few questions you have asked about sugarcane farming. I appreciate for your concern, I appreciate for your willingness to know what happens. So as you go to your areas, can you make sure that at least you practice what I have done? As well, let me just say that uh, we are going to take a short break and after a few minutes we are going to meet here so that I can show you now how to plant sugar cane. Welcome back my learners, 
I have taken you through the long process and uh, I have answered all your questions. We are now back for the real planting of our sugar cane. What do I need to plant my sugar cane? Number one, I need to have a jembe or even a, a hole which can make my, my hole. Number two, I need to have enough supply of water. Number three, I need to have manure. And lastly, I need to have the planting materials. And which planting materials do I use in this case? I have already cut my sugar cane from the main source there. So I'm going to have two types of planting materials. Whereby the first planting material is the stem itself. Because remember sugar cane is just stem cutting. Then number two, we have the upper part of the sugar cane which is green. We can call it seed cane. This is my seed cane and this is my stem cutting. So we are going to plant the two of them at the same time so that we compare which one can produce the best. So this is how I start it. I will begin by making either a basin or a trench. A basin or a trench. Let's say of uh, around 2.5 or even according to the size. If it is a basin, it should be a bit deep. If it is a trench, not much for it to be a bit deep. So how do I start it? I can make one of the basin on this side. Then as I make the second one, it must be one meter away. So young man, you are going to try to make a hole here of 2.5 feet. I think it can work here. And uh, because you have visited my farm, you are going to make just a small hole here on the other side using the, the hole, right? Are we ready to go? Are we ready to go? Okay, let's go. Brian, this side, Julian. I think I remember your name very well. Do it from the other side. Let's go. Just make it a bit a bigger one. 2.5 can work. Let's go. Let the soil be on the sides. The soil to be on the sides. Okay, let me help you and show you how to do it. So, I think uh, you need to have enough energy to do it as well. So, let the soil come to the sides. The soil to the sides, make the heap on the side. Remember, it rained at night. So, my, my soil is a bit sticky. So, you should not worry about it. Yes, young girl, just continue. Or you need the help from me? Do you need the help from me, Julia? Okay. Now, when I am done with this, what do I do? Brian, help me. What do I do after this? After I make my hole, what do I do? Brian is telling me I place my sugar cane. Is that true? Uh, I remember your name? Stacy Wanjiro. Uh -huh. What do I do after making my hole? I put manure in it. Thank you very much. Can you appreciate her? Yes, I put manure. So, now help me to put manure here, Ivanga. We have the manure with us here. Uh -huh. Just put enough manure. Enough manure. At least I am blessed. I have a lot. Okay, that's good. Now, after you put manure, what do you do? You begin by returning the, the top soil, the one I put on the sides, okay? So I just put little soil, little top soil in the hole, little top soil in it. Then I do what? I mix, okay? I mix completely. Remember I said organic manure is very safe and again, it stays in the soil for a very long time. time. Then now, after that, you are the one to choose which one to plant. Is it the stem or even the seed cane? Brian, which one do you want to use? Use the seed cane. Now, you'll just make sure that the, the seed cane, remember, we are very much concerned with the, with the bands. Remember? The joint is having the bands, which normally is proud to give you new cans. Okay? So it is either you plant it when sliding, but not when standing straight. straight. So move on, just do it. Make sure that it's the soil a bit slanting. You can even light on the ground, it's okay. Then after that, now make sure that every band is covered with, so with soil, okay? So I make sure that the soil that I had, no, 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 remember we are using the manure. So you cover it completely, the bands. Then after that, now we are going to add more manure as you wish like, so add more. Just add more manure. The sun is scorching. If you do first, it will help us to do it. So that's okay. Now on the other side, that's very much okay now. After that, we are going to water it. But let us see how now we are going to plant the, the stem one. 
How are we going to plant the stem one? Let me just come this side here. Let me help Julian. Now, Julian on the other side, what do you do? Remember, this is a basin. So what are we going to make here now? A trench, okay? So just make a small one. And this is how, what I wanted from you. You just make a small trench. Remember, it will depend with the size of the material. If your material is long, make a longer one. If the material is just short, make a short one, okay? But remember, it should be wide enough to hold, to hold water, okay? Uh, let's go. So, after that, I can just up the soil from the deeper side on the side because I don't need it for now. I don't need it for now. And then the process goes. So, you must make it a bit to be a trench in a way. So mine is just a short one, but it's a demonstration, okay? Good. Now, after that, step number two, add manure. Bring the manure here, my friends. Just pour everything inside there. We'll get more from our supply. That's okay. Then after that, now Julian, try to mix. Try to mix the manure with the soil. It's okay, you can mix with the agenda. It's also allowed. And that is okay. Now, after mixing, you can make a small trench again to lay your planting material. So a small one now at the center. You can make a trench again at the center, just a small one, where you're going to lay your, your planting material. This one can just lie flat, just this way. Remember, I've said the advantage of it is it is having very many what? Bands, okay? These bands are the ones to give you new what? New cans. Is that okay, Lanas? Yes, then now from there, I cover it again completely. So I cover it with the soil completely. Remember, you see the, the, the already fertilized one, eh? So we are using organic. So after covering it, now our last step will be watering. Ivanga, help me now start watering this. And remember we said that I have drips, only that my supply of the water will be coming in the evening. So I just water, begin with that one. Which method are you using now? Mugo, which method are you using to water the chicken that you have planted? Yes. You are using what you call a watering what? Jack, water, watering can, right? But remember what I said, we are going to use drip later, okay? Yes, as you continue. Just continue, continue watering, continue watering, continue watering. So that is okay. Now, uh, as we wind up, remember what I've said. And I want just to ask you a simple question. And if maybe you don't have the idea, I'll also let you read it now. How long do you think the can takes in the farm to be affested? How long does it take to be affested? Yes? We can talk about two to four months, okay? So, I appreciate you for visiting me in my farm. I am very happy. God bless you. And you aspire to become farmers like I am later. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you kids for visiting my farm today. I am happy that you have learned something or now. You can grow cans in your homesteads. So can you, do, can you go and practice the same? And God bless you.